Uh, it's great to be here supporting and partnering with independent gyms and to rip, um, just to reflect on what Rob said, you know, it's equally really important for us to be, to be partnering with, with this event uh, and with independent gyms and Rob and the team. Um, this is a very important part of the sector. Uh, 3,000 facilities across the country of equal importance to any other part of the segment work that we do with our members and partners. So it's great to be here um, to really develop and strengthen those relationships going forward. Um, I've got a full, the whole group of the team here seems to be coalescing around a particular table here. Um, and our commitment across the day is there. Georgie's final day before maternity leave is testament uh, to the commitment that we are throwing to this event. So it's great to be here today. I think before I bring on the experts in Dr. Esme and Hattie to talk a bit more about consumer polling and the work we do, especially through our, our stream of work around sweat, which is around the boutique and independent sector, I really want to talk about you know, what we're here to do on your behalf, really. Uh, we are here to grow and develop your businesses. We are here to grow and develop the businesses to support your growth and development in the areas that you work in. Um, the purpose of UK Active is really three things, to support, protect, inform. There's a load of questions that come up all the time from our members and partners about how you engage on day-to-day -day all the operational challenges. And so we're here to provide you with expertise and guidance and counsel from within the team or where we seek it from other parts. We're here to represent and champion. We are unapologetic in how we do that on behalf of the role of physical activity and also the role of our members and partners in delivering that. This is such an important agenda, such an important agenda for our nation right now in terms of how we improve its health. So that's super important. And then how we grow. You know, this is not a static sector. The society is moving around us all the time. How do we make sure that we're growing at the right pace, being inclusive to the communities that you're operating with? So that's really important. And all our members come in different shapes and sizes. So if you get, you know, from the, from the big multi-chain to the independents and the single sites. And they all have challenges, all have different, the same aspirations and, and the same challenges and obstacles to how they then grow. So that's where we really position our work as an organization in four areas, really. We look at data and insight and the work that we do around sector intelligence and consumer intelligence. What's that basically mean? Where are your next customers coming from? How do you understand where your next customers are coming from? What's going to attract them to, instead of looking through the window of your facility, to come inside and to really spend time to get to know who you are and then use your services? It's around risk and standards. And that's everything from financial pressures through to health and safety pressures through to societal pressures, everything that's being thrown at you right now, and how we work to make sure we give you the right guidance and frameworks to operate on a day-to-day -day basis so you're reassured about that you're doing the right thing from a legal perspective and from a reputational perspective. You guys are building reputations all the time, and it can take it very, it can, you can lose that really quickly unless you, you get the necessary support you need. We then look at the growth, you know, and it's across all areas, digital, equalities, diversity, inclusion, health integration that we'll be talking about across the day today, looking at your infrastructure, looking at all the areas in which you're looking to grow and develop your, 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 your operations. And then finally, through lobbying, uh, there's a general election tomorrow. We'll see what happens when we all wake up on Friday morning in terms of who's won. Um, it's looking in a certain direction, but you never know what happens in, in these things. And then we will work, as we have been throughout the general election right now, to really develop brand new relationships if it is a new government. We've got some really good relationships with, with the opposition right now. We'll take those into government if they do win tomorrow. Um, but it's a real good opportunity for you guys to think how you work with us on showcasing to brand new MPs, brand new ministers, brand new prime minister, the value of what you provide in your local area. And this is an opportunity and the time to capitalize on that. And so that's really important how we showcase the very best of what we do to support the health and well-being of the nation when there's so many challenges around health right now with waiting lists and long-term sick. So you guys are right at the heart of the solution for that. And we want to make sure that there's great, great visibility to what you do. And that's why I'm going to bridge back now to the first point, which is around consumer engagement. This is all about really understanding where, where your next customers are coming from, understanding what their motivations are, their barriers, uh, really understanding how you develop your campaigns and how you develop your programs and services in the way. And that comes from the intelligence and the work that the guys have been doing to really share with you, to really understand how you develop and grow your facility. So great to be here today, around for the rest of the day. The team is here today, uh, but let me bring on the experts. So Dr. Esme and Hattie, come to the stage, please. Lovely. 
lovely. Thank you, Hugh. Um, and hello, everyone. I'm just going to flick through here. So um, just following on from what Hugh just said, so, um, and he may have mentioned it to around Vision 2030. So UK Active have a vision um, leading up to 2030 to reach 5 million more people into the sector um, using pools, gyms, leisure facilities. Um, and so as part of that, consumer engagement, we need to understand what those 5 million people want, how they want to engage with us. Um, so as part of our wider sector intelligence um, and data and insight that Hugh's just touched on, consumer engagement is a part of that. So when formed alongside Sport England's Moving Communities, which is obviously public operator focus and our private sector benchmarking, um, that gives us a really good overview of what's going on in the sector, both uh, on the ground in your facilities, but also from a consumer perspective, um, both as members and non-members. So we know from a lot of this data that um, memberships and participation in facilities is increasing, but what we need to know um, a bit more is what motivates those people to access our facilities, how do we keep them engaged, retain them, progress them, get them to bring their friends and families, um, and then more importantly, we need to understand the people that aren't engaging with our audience and our sector um, to really help drive towards Vision 2030. So we've recently, I think it was May, uh, beginning of May, released our On the Road to Vision 2030 Consumer Engagement Report. Um, at the very end of this presentation, there's a QR code that you'll be able to download it if you haven't seen it already. Um, so we're just going to give you a really high level overview of some of the data that's within that, what that is, what consumer engagement is at UK Active. And then in the breakout session after this, we're joined by the amazing Jules um, from Active Insight, where we'll dive deeper into that data as well and be able to have conversations around it. Just want to touch on our partners for this work. So core partner in Diaco, who I believe are here today, and Matrix, and also Gladstone. So they really help sort of support the, the work that we're doing and the strategic direction of that. So what is consumer engagement? What do we mean by that? So consumer engagement at UK Active is the regular interaction and relationship with existing fitness and leisure consumers, um, but also the potential of new consumers, so people that aren't using our facilities. And what we're trying to do is observe behaviours, feelings of those consumers, their motivations, their barriers, their perceptions of our sector to really help break down those barriers. And then methodology, so how do we do this, basically? So we do regular quarterly polling. We're about to embark on wave seven. Um, so that's little over sort of 18 months worth of data that we sit on. Um, and we do that with a market research specialist called Savanta Comres. Um, so it's based on um, a national representative sample, and that's various demographics that are shown on the screen there. Um, but kind of the key things to highlight are that we look at current members, so people that have a membership, um, former members, so have previously been a member and no longer a member for whatever reason that might be, and then people that have never engaged in our sector at all. So those are the three key audiences of which we kind of look at. Um, we have standard set of themes and questions in the polling so that we're able to track trends, and then each quarter we kind of look at the environment, the wider landscape of what's going on. So as you can imagine, more recently in the last poll we were looking at fit themes and questions around health of the nation leading into what was coming in in general election, um, and we kind of help define what you know and understand what consumers believe, your members believe, are happening in those areas as well to help kind of with the strategic alignment of certain areas that we deliver at UK Active and uh, the sector development team. So, EDI, health, digital transformation, women and girls, for example, are some of those pieces that help you know this questioning help informs. So, I'm going to pass over to Esme, who's going to take you through some of that headline data. Yeah, so I've got what I think is the exciting pile, but I think that's maybe I'm a bit biased. So starting on touching on sort of the membership status that we're currently seeing, as Hattie mentioned, those definitions. So when we're talking about current members, those that do have a membership and engage in the facilities, formers the ones that might have had one in the past and then they've cancelled. So that's the pink line, uh, sorry, currents in the purple, and then those never. So as we can see, unfortunately, this is probably not sitting where we'd want it to. So current members are at the lowest. So an average of about 20% of uh, respondents uh, say they're a current member. Former sits around 39% and never at about 34 
So obviously with this data, we want to try and change those lines around, get that current sitting up there higher. So now just looking at some of the activity levels, and again, we've split this out by membership status. Um, so, and then in the sort of yellowy bar, I'm not sure how well that's showing up there, we've got all the respondents as well. Um, so at the moment from this data, those sort of m meeting the, the guidelines for 150 plus minutes sits around 21%, so this is obviously very low, uh, with about 37% doing one, uh, 31 to 149 minutes of um, sort of moderate to uh, vigorous uh, physical activity. Probably not um, that surprising, but current members are doing the most, which is obviously positive, uh, with those engaging in an average of, th um, so 32% doing the recommendations, but this is obviously um, arguably still too low. On a more like reassuring side of things though, those saying they never do any um, sort of moderate to vigorous physical activity is only 2% of current members. So again, so the sort of former members, their pattern actually reflects all respondents quite similarly, and those that are never members are the ones that we are seeing doing the least amount of physical activity. Now sort of to hone back in on looking specifically at members. So this question is asked only to those that who say yes, they do have a current membership. So we ask them sort of what are they engaging at when they go to their facilities? What activities are they doing and how frequently? So gym workouts are what's being engaged in the most uh, with an average of 86% of respondents who are members saying they do this at least once a month. Swimming drops down to 63%, and uh, group workouts are also still very popular, uh, with 59% saying that they're engaging in this activity at least once a month. Using the gym at least twice a week is um, around 52% of current members, so again, that's good engagement, but it could potentially still be higher. Lastly, just to look at overall dry and wet usage, and again, this is asked to, this is going back to all respondents, uh, so this could also reflect sort of pay-as-you-go membership, sort of one-time use as well. Um, so actually, from tracking those trends um, across time, across the, those quarters that Hathi mentioned, there is actually a bit of an increase in those stating sort of never during the January period. Um, we actually did this polling quite early in January, so th again, this could be reflective of maybe Christmas. Um, so that's just one that we, we noticed there. More people are saying that they're never actually using the gym um, versus never using uh, swimming. So maybe this is a bit suggestive that sort of pay, go, going once as sort of a pay-as-you-go rate is easier for a swimming capacity. Uh, but conversely, more people are actually using the dry side than the wet side more, frequent, more frequently. So uh, more people are saying at least twice a week they go to the gym than they do swimming. So I'll now hand back to Hattie just to go through some of the motivations and barriers. Lovely. Thank you, Esme. Um, so that gives you a bit of a flavour in terms of some of the data that we can dive into. And again, we can dive deeper into some of those examples. Um, but just to go over some of the kind of key and sort of national picture motivations, we, um, you can see here, these are the top five motivations that when we ask current users um, what motivates them to have a gym membership, um, you can see that obviously, um, hopefully you can see, it's not that clear. To improve, um, to the top is to improve, maintain um, physical strength and fitness, followed by to improve my mental health and well-being. Now, this is really interesting um, and really shows a kind of, I guess, a shift in our kind of sector and our perception of the sector in terms of actually, you know, why people are active. So we've moved away from just that physical appearance, weight loss, that kind of terminology, and actually people understand in an age population and a country that's got mental health crisis that actually physical activity that narrative that we've been talking about for over the years is starting to resonate because it's there in the top five motivations um, so I think that's really interesting and shows that we can continue to drive that narrative and there's still work but it is starting to shift and then just looking at kind of high-level barriers 
Um, so looking into these, um, cost of membership is the top one, not a surprise, we're in a cost of living crisis. Um, but again, the bottom two on this slide um, is around feeling uncomfortable and not having the confidence to join a gym. Now, these are two things um, that I think are really easy for us to under you know, to make change on. It's really, you know, really clear that we can make people feel comfortable, we can engage them, it's about that sign up, that first visit, making them feel welcome. These are really tangible things that is, as teams in your organisations and in the wider sector that we can address without having to pump loads of money into it. So, you know, it's those kind of things that we need to look at and go, actually, we can make some shifts here, we can make some changes and really tangibly start to engage people and make them feel comfortable because naturally, um, similar things in a piece of research we did a couple of years ago focused on women and girls um, was around feeling comfortable, feeling like I have to be fit to, or to go to the gym. It's for the fit. We all know that's not true. We all know, and I can guarantee you can all think of someone, if not more than one person, um, that really doesn't fit that mark um, using your facilities. So that's where I think there's a huge opportunity for us to get better at storytelling, to showcase for your workforce, for your members those people those relatable stories so that when people see them they go well actually that person looks like me oh their story is very similar to mine I can go and do that now we want to hear those stories we want you to inundate us with them through our membership team through all of us and then we can raise those stories up so we can use those in our conversations with government through our media connections and really help drive that narrative and showcase that so I'm expecting everyone to inundate me now um, with those. But just as an example, and we will touch on this in um, our deeper dive in our breakout session, you may be aware, which I touched on the women and girls work that we did a couple of years ago, um, which demonstrated that feeling uncomfortable, feeling unconfident, and also that fear of harassment and intimidation with the sector. Now, that's a societal issue, and we're not going to solve that. But we have a role to play with that. We're embedded in communities across the UK and can help support that. So we took that data, we saw that going, okay, that's not great, that doesn't look good, but actually what can we do about it? How can we support you as independents, the private public sector, to really tackle that? So we looked at that, we created a guide with tangible action plan, five-step action plan, um, which is free for you to all access if you haven't got it. And we'll talk about that in more detail next. Um, but we're from that has also led to a bigger project around safer spaces to move um, with this girl can um, which has just finished a pilot phase around making women feel comfortable and knowing that there's a zero tolerance policy and if for any reason they feel uncomfortable on the gym floor that people can support them so we can touch on that but it shows where you can take a piece of data really look at that go okay issue how do we change that and that's what we at UK Active are trying to do really support you in tackling those issues. So in terms of the report, um, it's got all that data in it, um, but also it's really designed to be tangible. So what? Okay, it tells us that. So what? Well, in the report, you'll find key tangible actions that you can take on board and have a look at, and we're looking to evolve that over time. So we'll continue to do these reports, maybe focused in on specific areas, and to really build on that. And here's how you get the report if you haven't got it already. Um, so download it. As Hugh said, we're around all day. Happy to field any questions and hope to see some of you in the breakout. <laughs>